Welcome to the W5 Edit Suite. I'm Avery Haynes, joined by producer Denise Kimmel and editor Dennis Langlois. And we're just uh, putting the finishing touches on a documentary that's airing on Saturday called The Guinea Pig Soldiers. And it's a story that we've been working on for a number of months now about Canadian uh, soldiers, nearly 900 of them, who are suing the Canadian government and the Defence Department, essentially accusing them of poisoning them with an anti-malarial drug. And we've seen these clips many times, but every time we see them, it sort of still breaks your heart a little bit because it's so strong and these soldiers are really feeling like they're on their own. But there is one lawyer who stepped up and sort of rallying for them, and there's uh, also a big name general that's come on board now. And this is, so the drug is called Mefloquin, and it's sold under the brand name Lyrium. And this is a drug that has been absolutely steeped in controversy since Canada first used it when it was an not a legal drug in this country. They first used it on soldiers in Somalia. And they did so with a promise uh, to the drug company that they would carry out a clinical trial. These soldiers were never told that they were part of a clinical trial, hence the name the guinea pig soldiers. Their adverse uh, uh, reactions that were happening on the base in Somalia were never documented and the drug then went on to be approved and used for soldiers in Afghanistan as well as in Rwanda. What the suit is alleging is that not only were there horrifying effects for some soldiers on those three missions at the time of taking the drug, they had names of the week, Ma uh, Monday Mad Manic Monday, Terror Tuesday, Wacky Wednesday, Freaky Friday, because some soldiers were having massive amount, they were having hallucinations, they were having these extremely vivid dreams, they were having intense rage. I mean, really, really affected. And now we're hearing that some of these might be permanent, actually, and some of these are suicidal tendencies as well, which we heard from one of the soldiers, just keeps haunting over and over and over again. These guys are living with it for decades now at this point. And they've been rallying at Ottawa, just try, on Parliament Hill, trying to get people to listen. So hopefully this will be the last year that they have to do that, and maybe they'll get some, some feedback from Ottawa at this point with this new lawsuit. Right, and we, we interviewed the, uh, this expert on mefloquine toxicity. So mefloquine is a neurotoxin. He described how it actually destroys the cells in the nervous system. And he is has been at the forefront of sort of talking about the impact that mefloquine can have. And he describes this pill as a horror movie in a pill. And he says that uh, there is a real concern that the number of soldiers, especially those who served on those three missions, who are now being diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, may be misdiagnosed, that it may be a result of taking the mefloquin, the, the effects that they're feeling now. And you know, we, we looked at back and did some research on how many suicides there had been of Canadian soldiers from the time it was first started in 1992 until the time it was used as a drug of last resort in 2016. Mm -hmm. More than a thousand soldiers died by suicide. There is no way of knowing how many of those may have been effect, uh, an effect of, of mefloquin. We want to just show you, so we've, we, in our piece, we have some extraordinary men. Um, we didn't speak to any women in this, but I, I mean, I know there's some of the research that I read suggests that women suffered less yes. from, uh, from this drug. But one of the guys that we interviewed is a, a man named Mike Rood. He was on mefloquine in Somalia as yes, well as twice Afghanistan. Afghanistan as well. Yeah. So he had two missions where he was uh, forced to take it. And um, take he, he's driving across the country right now with a van. Trying to raise awareness. Um, and he's had some really troubling times. But he's doing this because he wants other soldiers to realize that, hey, maybe my symptoms aren't PTSD and maybe I have these other issues. Maybe some of these guys have been going through therapy for years and years and years, assuming it's PTSD, but not getting any results. So it could be this methylquine toxic toxicity poisoning that they're going through like he is, and he realized it, and trekking across the country trying to say, say to other soldiers, here, this might be the reason why you're having all these problems. Right, because some of the, even though many of the symptoms sort of mimic post-traumatic stress disorder. There are some specific ones that are not related to post-traumatic stress disorder. There's ringing in the ears, there's vertigo, there's suicidal ideation, I mean thoughts of suicide, um, severe gastrointestinal issues, memory loss. These are independent of what you would experience with post-traumatic stress disorder. Dennis is going to just uh, show you a tiny little bit of what's coming up Saturday night on W5 at 7. I had tried to take my life a year and a half ago so and then 
I tried a year before that. I'm a mountain ops instructor, right? I, I know how to tie dozens of knots. I didn't know how to tie a noose, so I Googled it. And I tied a noose, and I tied it to the ceiling of my shed. Because I didn't, I didn't want to do this anymore. I mean, really, really powerful, powerful stories of people who have suffered so much and really are looking for answers more than they are money. I think that's 100% true. One of the people that we interviewed is a man named Richard Schumann, who I had met when I was at a, a rally in Kingston six months ago. The minute he stood up to speak, I knew that he had to be, even though it came at a cost to him, Huge price, yeah. he had to be uh, a person who was the face and the voice of, of mefloquine toxicity. And he told me after we chatted um, last spring that it had undone him sharing his story, which he had never told anyone before, um, that it had sent him back in his therapy that had really, he had struggled. And we've stayed in touch uh, all these months later, and he felt strongly that he wanted to tell his story. But he beforehand had prepared doctors, family members to be there right after the interview was finished so that he could have their help in processing his telling of a story that he's been trying desperately to forget since he went to Afghanistan in, in 2002. But he felt so strongly about telling it again for W5. He just felt like he wanted to share it and wanted to go through all this pain again, all this therapy they, that he had to have, have to go through just to have other soldiers hear his story. Maybe other, maybe it'll help other, others as well, but he, as you were saying, a huge cost to him, so he really put himself out on a limb, and we still keep in touch with him, and he's an amazing guy. He is an amazing guy, and you know, it's interesting, like I posted on my personal Facebook page uh, this story, and the number of people, the comments from soldiers uh, around the world saying, I was on mefloquine, this happened to me. This is a drug that's still legal in Canada, and what I, what I think is really fascinating about this story is that this is not a story of a pharmaceutical that did wrong. The pharmaceutical Hoffman LaRoche was very clear in its own warning labels, very clear all the way along that this is a drug that some people have serious and long-lasting side effects of. They've been upfront on that from the very beginning. So that's an interesting switch and exactly why um, the drug company is not being named in this lawsuit. Um, again, 900 soldiers have mm -hmm. signed up, but some 3,000 have reached out to the to the law firm um, to say that to express an interest in it. This is a mass tort, which is kind of like a class action, except um, unlike a class action, each lawyer or each uh, soldier will be able to decide whether to opt in or opt out if a settlement is reached. And uh, Really, really, this is one of the more powerful stories that we've put together. It's a story that W5 told back in the 1990s, and Dennis, who's our editor on this, uh, edited that piece way back then, raising the alarm about this. Um, so again, W5 starts at 7 o'clock uh, across the country on CTV.